Go ahead. Okay, hi, I'm Mia. Hi, I'm Courtney. Uh, we're doing the ethylpy uh, vaporization of water. And we're going to start now. <laughs> so what do you guys have prepared so far? Okay, should, so say that part again. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, we have a 2,000 milliliter beaker filled halfway with distilled water and a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder filled about 90% of the way. Turn it upside down to keep the air bubble inside. And then she's got it underneath. And that air bubble stayed right in there at the top. Very nice. Looks good. Okay. And you can go ahead. You can go ahead and put it on the hot plate and get it started heating. Save yourself a little bit of time. Can I turn it all the way? Yeah, you can heat that on high because we have to get it up to a boil. All right. Can I? Oh no, that will take. Now Courtney's going to get some more water to fill it the rest of the way. It's not a rush because you're going to have it in there before it gets to a boil. So, yeah. But if she uses warm water, that makes the whole process go faster. We said. Volume three degrees. Okay. Good technique. Keep that steady. Good. And it looks like you need a little bit more because we need the graduated cylinder to be completely covered so that so that the air bubble is completely trapped by uh, or surrounded by water the entire time. If the camera is taking away a person with a photo by, I mean, he's already filming me, so I might as well make an appearance. <laughs> and now the waiting begins, so we'll check back in when this gets uh, up to a higher temperature, somewhere around uh, 90 or so, I think, 90 or 95, right? 75 to 80. Okay, we'll see you then. Um, our water's heated up to 79.4. Let's move the uh, graduate cylinder in towards the middle a little bit, if we could. Just so that it's, you know, sort of at the center of the, of the water. So, so it does matter if center. I can't do it. So, all right. There we go. Okay. So what do we need to do now to collect our data? <laughs> Good shot your elbow there, sorry. That's my fault. Alright, there we go. So I'll come down and show people the bubble here. So what we're doing is we're measuring the volume of the bubble trapped inside the graduated cylinder. And we're going to do that at several different temperatures. 
little bit of a challenge here because of all those little air bubbles on the inside of our system but we've got a pretty good setup here where our thermometer is anchored in so we'll just constantly have the temperature and we just have to watch the uh, volume of the bubble contract mm, every four or five degrees probably right three to five degrees every three to five degrees the more data points we get the more accurate it'll be okay so once they've collected this set of data uh, I'll get a shot of it for you guys to uh, analyze as your uh, lab data as well. Yeah. So now we're going to get the barometric pressure while we're waiting for our water to cool. And if you look here, it's 992 millibars, which is 0.992 bar, which we can later convert to atmosphere. Alright. Uh, 50 degrees, so we're going to add ice until the temperature gets below 5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so they put a lot of ice in and you can see the bubble has contracted down to a very small volume. This is going to be an important point in our data analysis. And so we can look at the data set that Mia collected here. And hopefully we can get this in focus enough here. All right. So I'm going to try to scroll down. So this is the temperature dependent data that the girls collected. In the left column you can see is the volume of the bubble. And the right-hand column is the various temperatures recorded in degrees Celsius. This will be used to uh, to make the clausius clapper graph that you'll do in a little while. The other important data point is the volume of that bubble that we just looked at when it was at about as cold as we could get it. So at 4.5 degrees Celsius, again, the volume was 2.8 milliliters there. The, the units here are the same as they were in the upper, uh, upper table that we saw. This point is not going to be part of the graph that we make, but it is important in one of the first calculations that we perform, uh, collect, uh, determining sorry, the moles of air inside the uh, gas bulb that we were looking at. So at this point you've got all the data, the cleanup is super easy, we'll pour the water down the drain and we're all done. So thanks to Mia and Courtney for their help and to everybody who's watching, good luck with your calculations.